be king of the pirates, I'm gonna be king. What's up, you guys? Chase the Dark Saint here, and we are back with another One Piece manga review. That's why I said it, guys. Another One Piece manga review. And in this video, you obviously seen it from the title. We are going over the Skypea arc, which includes Jaya and Skypea. So basically, in this video, we are covering chapters 218 to 302. Now, when I first saw that number, honestly, it was a little daunting, and I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish that. But after I got done reading the Skypea arc in the manga, I gotta say, I was quite satisfied. Now with Jaya being only 19 chapters and the Skypea arc being 66 chapters in total, it was a little bit of a story, but I gotta say that I definitely did enjoy the build up towards the end of the story. And I felt like everything and all paid off. So I gotta say that this story was a great story. While the villain's motives weren't that great to me, I still gotta say that most of this story right here was pretty attractive. But before we get into the video, before I tell you my thoughts on One Piece and this arc, I gotta say shout out to my Patreon pledges for financially supporting the channel and financially supporting myself. I gotta say I highly appreciate what you guys are doing. Also, shout out to Notification Squad and my returning viewers and subscribers for all the love and support they give me. And if you're new to the channel, you like manga reviews, manga hauls, you like figures, figure hauls, figure reviews, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that post notification bell. I need everybody to go ahead, hit this video with a like. In fact, hit it with a like or I'll hit you with one of the Nero's blasts with his rumble rumble fruit or whatever it was called. And also, if you want to hit me up on all my other social media accounts, go ahead and check the links in the description down below. If you want your name to be shown at the beginning of the video like I did earlier, go ahead and pledge to the Patreon. And if you want some cool Dark Sage merch, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. All my links will be in the description down below. So, let's go ahead and get into it. I had to get my shameless plugs out the way because I'm ready to talk One Piece. I know it's been a while since I talked One Piece, but if you actually come through to the Twitch stream some... Oh yeah, Dolphin was hard. I don't care what no one say. That is, that is a... A hard gentleman. Pause. That is a hard gentleman. And oh my gosh, when he fought Zoro and he pulled that little knife out, that little butter knife out to fight Zoro with Zoro, and Zoro had three swords. He said, "Why do I need a cannon to kill a rabbit?" Oh my god, that's the biggest. Oh, that is the biggest stunt that I have read in a while. And oh, that's just to me, it's the biggest stunt. I actually do talk a little bit about One Piece on there, so go ahead, go to the Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash chase the dark sage, and also will be in the link in the description down below, where we do read manga, we watch manga, and we react, and we all have a good time. So go ahead, if you wanna see that, go ahead. I'm trying to become an affiliate on there, so if you guys do follow the boy, I highly appreciate it. But let's go ahead and talk about this arc right here, because, whoo, it took me a while to get through this arc, honestly. As of recording this right now, I'm actually on Water 7. I'm like chapter 349, I think. But when I was going through this arc, honestly, it was a little bit of a doozy because the Jaya arc to me, the way it started, really wasn't entertaining. It was really boring. I really didn't like Bellamy as a villain, I guess, if you want to call him the villain of this arc. I just thought it was boring. And the story with Nolan and all that, it was boring. But wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there is more because I was won over with the Nolan arc towards the end of Skypea, it all started to make sense. See, Oda, this is what Oda gets me with. He starts off real slow and I'm thinking to myself, man, this story needs to pick up or I'm about to drop this manga. But then the story picks up and I'm like, man, how could anyone drop this manga? Now, I know a lot of people are turned off with One Piece because it has over 900 episodes and over 900 chapters. It's almost gonna hit a thousand. Honestly, let's clap for Oda because whoo, hit a thousand chapters. That's greatness. I gotta say, I highly appreciate what Oda is doing with One Piece, especially with the story that he has written and the world building that he does with arcs like Jaya and Skypea. From coming from Alabasta to Skypea, the world building in One Piece is just super insane. And characters like Crocodile and then another villain like Iniru, it's just super crazy, especially with how the powering system is, I guess, in One Piece, because there necessarily isn't a power system or a power leveling system where one character is stronger than the other. It's basically, how can this character defeat this other character? And honestly, Luffy did beat Iniru and Crocodile, obviously, because there is like 900 chapters and Luffy is the main character. But the way he defeats these characters, it makes sense. And I gotta say that I highly enjoy this manga. I just really, really love this manga. Now, if you guys didn't know, if you're not a returning viewer or subscriber, I used to watch One Piece within the 4Kids dub back when it was on 4Kids, obviously. And obviously, that stopped, I believe, at Alabasta. I stopped watching it at Alabasta, at least. So, when I used to see the character like Iniru in the game, I used to think that he was a side character. I didn't think he was a main villain. So, when I actually saw him in the story and he was the main villain, he tried to pass off as this godlike character. I gotta say, that I thought he was out of his mind especially with the long earlobes, but he was out of his mind. And the way that he is in the manga, I felt his energy through the manga. And he was just this 
character that felt like he was a deity that just came from the heavens down below. He felt like no one else should be in Skypea. And honestly, I do like the concept. The motive really didn't intrigue me within the uh, manga, but I gotta say, I do love Nero as a villain because he is evil, but he's a god. Like, how can you be a god and you be evil? Make that make sense to me, Nero. Please tell me. But besides all that, I gotta say that I love the character design in, Nir in Nero. I love this mantra power that they basically have. It's kind of like Dragon Ball Z, where you could sense like power levels and things like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was able to hear everything in Skypea because of the long earlobes and all that. But the way that this mantra system works, it made me think like, is this like a part of hockey? Like, this made me believe that it was kind of like a tie-in from Naruto because if you actually look at Iniru, I don't know if like Naruto or whatever these arcs came out, I don't know how it coincides, but you know how Sasuke has a Sharingan, Iniru has some things that have like the Sharingan little sign in it, and then he had this mantra where you could read other people's moves. I thought that was kind of like a little cool nod to Naruto if it was, or maybe Masashi Kishimoto actually got that from Iniru and made the Uchiha clan. I don't know, I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments down below. I am a One Piece newbie. I'm not gonna act like I'm this One Piece pro. Literally guys, I give you the most basic surface reviews of these one piece mangas chapters that i read and i just give you my honest opinion my thoughts i'm not going into it i'm not gonna get super deep if you guys do want to have a bigger conversation about it we can talk about it in the comments or you come to the twitch stream and we can talk about it there or you can hit me up in the dms obviously because i'm always open but like i said guys the one great thing that i really do love about this arc is the world building because like i said coming from alabaster to skypea two separate totally different worlds but i gotta say i enjoyed both of them i really love the way that uh skypea was and the way that jaya actually led in the skypea because like i said earlier I didn't really like the Jaya part, but when it led into Skypea, and then we get to the end of Skypea, especially with that little flashback scene with Nolan and Kalgara. Oh, shoot. I'm not gonna lie. I felt super satisfied after reading those chapters. I felt super satisfied after Luffy rung that bell for my boy Cricket down there. I gotta say, <laughs> One Piece is heat. Like, if you're not reading One Piece yet, go ahead and read it. I know a lot of people see the anime episodes and they just get tired just from looking at the number of episodes that are in One Piece. But if you read the manga, honestly, it goes by pretty quick. I started in late August of 2020 this year as I'm recording this, obviously. And right now it's November 15th. It's almost my birthday. If y'all guys want to, you know, give me a little birthday gift, go ahead pledge to the Patreon. But <laughs> it is 11 15th and I am on chapter 342. I'm literally almost one third of the way to completing or catching up with One Piece. So guys, it's not that bad. If you read the manga, if you make time for it, especially as me as a content creator and someone that's also in school and works full time, you make time for the things you want. And honestly, all I can think about is One Piece, especially after this Skypea arc. Oh my gosh, all I can think about is One Piece. Like I said, I love the characters. I also love the fights. Uh, the only thing I really didn't like about this arc, like I said, first, it had a really slow start. And some of the battles actually, like when it was in the Trials of the Forest or whatever, didn't really like that either, but the solo straw hat battles that they had, especially with Robin, when she went Savage Mode, and then where I'm at Water 7 right now, she's going even more Savage Mode. Look, man, I'm about done with the review, man. Look, I give Skypea a high B. I give it a B plus, only because I didn't like the character of Aniru's motives, and I didn't like the way the Jaya arc started up. But even though, even though everything I felt was satisfying towards the end when Luffy did ring the bell, and then we had that flashback scene with Nolan and Kagura, I feel like a lot of the things right here was literally a slow burn, because at first, I really wasn't feeling it, but when we got towards the end, I, everything just started making sense. I was like, oh my gosh, Oda, you blew my brain. Like, oh my gosh, like, He's gonna go down as one of the greats, guys. He's gonna go as down as one of the greatest manga cause ever because of this long running shonen and the way he develops this character and the way that he puts these characters in these situations. Oh, Oda, I know, I know, I know. I'm praising Oda a little too much, but honestly, praise the manga cause because man, it takes a lot of work to do world building like that, to do character growth and development like that, and it just make a great series overall. So I gotta say, I highly appreciate this series. I highly appreciate what Oda is doing. I can't wait to finish Water 7 and get to Inner Slobby because whew, your boy is sweating because I'm, I'm ready to end this video and go read some Water 7. But that's it for the video, guys. I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Skypea and my thoughts about it. I think that it was a great arc overall. Like I said, it gets a B minus for me. It's not as great to me as Alabasta. Alabasta is right here. Skypea is right here. Skypea was not bad, but the startup of it was kind of slow. But as we got towards the end, everything, like I said, started to fall in place and it started to make sense. And I started to appreciate Jaya a lot more, especially the way that Luffy actually did everything in this arc, especially when he got serious and when he actually went Ultra Instinct. I see where Goku got Ultra Instinct from now. He got it from Luffy when he went in his little derpy mode. That way, Iniru couldn't read his mantra. Oh my gosh. 
I get it all. I get it all. Everything is a reference back to One Piece or JoJo. But everything is a reference back to One Piece. But I got to say, thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And guys, let me know your favorite arcs in One Piece. Let me know your favorite villain in One Piece. Right now, my favorite villain concept-wise is Nero because honestly, he does look godly. And that static electricity with his rumble rumble fruit definitely was dope. But I still love Crocodile because I feel like his motive was way better than Nero's. But right now, I'm on Water 7 and honestly, it's blowing everything out the water from what I'm reading right now. But that's it for the video, guys. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. Dark Sage out. Peace. His name's Zolo, he's just like a samurai and a L-A-D-Y, Nami's not shy. Usopp's doing that marksman thing. Sanji's cooking. Chopper